Hello, everyone. My name is Dennis Vert, and I'm a PhD student at the Paris Institute for Astrophysics, affiliated to Sorbonne University. I work on various aspects of inflation, from studying effective field theories of inflationary fluctuations to the theoretical understanding and phenomenological aspects of primordial non-gauchianities. Today, I'm going to introduce you to the cosmological flow. In a nutshell, the cosmological flow is a systematic and efficient method to compute primordial correlators. In particular, and as we will see in this talk, this approach is necessary when it comes to assisting our theoretical understanding of inflationary physics and generating new theoretical data for an unbiased interpretation of upcoming cosmological observations. This talk is based on two papers, a short paper and its long companion upcoming paper, in collaboration with Luca Pinol and Sébastien Renaud-Petel. In the first place, let me start by recalling that cosmological structures, such as galaxy distribution in the large-scale structure or temperature anisotropies in the cosmic microwave background, are correlated on large scales. And this remarkable property becomes manifest when studying their statistical properties, or equivalently, correlation functions of these fields. However, let me emphasize on the fact that the physics at play in cosmology and that drives these fluctuations is encoded in the time evolution of these correlators. To give a simple example, at the linear level, the two-point correlation function of some fluctuation, denoted x in Fourier space, is transported from some time t0 to t via the so-called transfer function that encodes all the relevant physics, linear clustering, etc. More impressively, under relatively mild assumptions, all these correlators can be traced back to the reheating surface, that is, the beginning of the hot Big Bang cosmology. And it is believed that inflation, an earlier period of accelerated expansion, occurred at a very high energy scale so that very massive particles can in theory be produced. As their decay leads to potentially observable signatures in primordial correlators, we would like to probe the particle content of inflation, for example, the number of fields, their mass spectra, spins, etc., and understand the various interactions among them. That is to build a more consistent and complete theory of inflation, just like the standard model in particle physics. And because the physics is encoded in the time evolution of primordial correlators, the philosophy of the cosmological flow is to follow the time evolution of these primordial fluctuations from their origin as quantum vacuum fluctuations during inflation to the reheating surface. This way, the cosmological flow is a formalism to go from theories of the early universe to primordial correlators that can be directly tested against the data. You may rightly wonder why the cosmological flow, so let me argue that its development is to break what we call the vicious circle of primordial cosmologists. Our main goal is to understand the physics of the early universe. More specifically, we want to build a complete dictionary between the physics at play during inflation and the corresponding observational consequences, giving physically motivated templates for comparison with observational data. As theorists, our task is to make accurate predictions to test against future data, that is to compute primordial correlators. Fortunately, we do have a well-defined and systematic procedure to compute these primordial correlators. However, this standard approach is technically challenging. Mostly limited by, by our computational abilities to compute primordial correlators, a common procedure is then to limit oneself to simple models uh, where analytical calculations are tractable. <clears throat> As a result, most of the theoretical predictions are available only in restricted classes of theories, which can lead to a biased interpretation of the data. One example is the commonly acknowledged fact that measuring the so-called cosmological collider signal pinpoints the masses of additional particles during inflation. And as we will see, it is more subtle and not that simple. Breaking the vicious circle, the cosmological flow is a complete method to systematically compute tree-level inflationary correlators, shifting our focus from technical considerations to an unbiased explore, uh, exploration of inflationary signatures. My plan is to first present the cosmological flow and then to show you concrete examples of how this approach gives the theoretical tools to extract as much information as possible about new fundamental physics. 
We have a well-defined method of making predictions, which consists in computing so-called feynman witten diagrams in perturbation theory. In practice, even at tree level, these diagrams are very complicated to compute. The reasons are at least threefold. The first reason is that the propagators of massive fields are complicated Hankel functions, or even more complicated functions in some theories. Second, because energy is not conserved in cosmology, we need to perform additional time integrals compared to flat space perturbation theory. And these integrals are in general nested. Third, correlators receive contributions from all times and are sensitive to the entire history during inflation. And one last point, which is important for what follows, is that usually the quadratic theory itself to derive propagators cannot be exactly solved. Eventually, one needs to resum all linear mixings to obtain exact correlators in the entire parameter space of generic theories. As we have just seen, primordial correlators are notoriously difficult to compute. And yet, powerful analytical tools have been developed in the past few years. Without entering into the details, I will just mention a few of them. One of them is the development of the Deciru cosmological bootstrap, which was then improved to include boost breaking interactions and the speed of sound for the inflot and fluctuations. I can also mention other techniques to be able to analytically compute inflationary correlators, for example, going to Mellon space or using partial Mellon Barnes representations. Although these analytical methods are interesting, they are at the moment quite limited. In fact, the entire space of motivated theories is not covered by current predictions, and the reason is purely technical. For example, in multi-field models of inflation, because Lorentz invariance is broken, we always have the ever-present linear mixing. In analytical calculations, this coupling is assumed to be weak, although it might not be the case, so that it can be treated perturbatively. For now, we only have analytical solutions for single exchange diagrams, but not for the double or triple exchange diagrams, even if the single exchange diagram in general does not generate the largest signal. Together with the observable curvature perturbation field, often only one additional massive and possibly spinning field is considered for simplicity. Analytical calculations often assume perfect scale invariance, but what if the inflationary model has features? Analytical predictions become tractable when there is a large hierarchy of scales, of masses, or couplings, because we can then resort to approximations. And of course, we can combine different points uh, and, for example, study double exchange diagrams with features, etc. And the main idea of the cosmological flow is that from first principles and at tree level, one can derive differential equations in time satisfied by the correlators. These so-called flow equations in Fourier space take the following form for the two and the three-point correlators. And together, they form a closed system that can be solved systematically. Let me stress two important points. First, the entire theory dependence is encoded in the U tensors. They exactly capture all quadratic and cubic effects of the theory and can encompass any time and momentum dependency. Second, initial conditions are automatically known for a bunch Davis vacuum in the infinite past. So essentially, we have converted the problem of computing complicated and sometimes an infinite number of nested time integrals to solving a set of coupled differential equations. Note that this framework has been previously developed in these papers, but their implementation is tied to specific background models. Here, we embrace the point of view of the EFT of inflationary fluctuations as they are ultimately responsible for any observable today. Focusing on inflationary fluctuations instead of background models, we're capable of computing correlators in all possible theories, offering a much richer and direct access to the physics of inflation. So in the end, after numerically solving these equations, we obtain all two and three point correlators at tree level, including the ones correlating different fields and their conjugate momenta at all time. So in the, in the late time limit, in practice, when the modes of the observed curvature perturbation freeze outside the horizon, we obtain primordial correlators. So the general advance with the cosmological flow is that we're able now to 
shift our focus from technical considerations to the unbiased exploration of inflation and generate new theoretical data that were up to now out of reach. To sum up, the cosmological flow offers new possibilities for studying, exploring, and understanding inflationary physics. For example, we can study the momentum dependence of the bispectrum, so the so-called shape, and its size, usually parameterized by the FNL parameter, in regimes that are not tractable by other means. We can explore aspects of cosmological collider physics, namely how massive particles are imprinted in soft limits of cosmological correlators. Of course, because we follow the time evolution of these correlators, we can have access to dynamical aspects of correlators during inflation. With this approach, we're able also to provide cosmologists with explicit new templates for upcoming surveys. Uh, we now move to some applications. For concreteness, I will focus on cosmological collider signals and give you a flavor of the rich phenomenology of these signals, also presenting new templates for upcoming surveys. Using the framework of the EFT of inflationary fluctuations, let us first couple the visible sector of the Gaussian boson of broken time translations during inflation in red, which is straightly related to the observed curvature perturbation, to an additional massive field in blue. So we have the free quadratic part for pi, the free quadratic part uh, in the Lagrangian for sigma, the massive field. Because Lorentz invariance is broken, the fields can mix at the quadratic level with a mixing in green. And the second line shows cubic interactions that will lead to three-point correlators. And so at weak mixing, this theory leads to single, double, and triple exchange diagrams. With the cosmological flow at hand, let us now relax the usual assumptions and consider two cases. First, the strong mixing case, and second, the time-dependent mixing case. So let us look at the kinematic dependence of the three-point correlators. In Fourier space, the three-point correlator can be seen as a function of triangles. Here, I represent the three-point function in the isosceles configuration from equilateral configurations on the right to the squeezed limit on the left. So information about new physics, for example, the presence of additional particles, can be inferred from the cosmological collider signal present in the squeeze limit of the bispectrum, whose frequency is conventionally set by the mass of the heavy field. And with the cosmological flow, we essentially show that the cosmological collider signal of heavy but weakly mixed particle oscillates at the same frequency than that of a light but strongly mixed particle. And this effect can be understood as a mass resummation. We consider an infinite number of quadratic mixings in the double exchange diagram that leads to an effective mass. Essentially, the propagation of the heavy field is affected by the surrounding massless field medium that interacts with it, leading to a self-energy correction. Although this degeneracy was already noticed in the literature, the cosmological flow allows for complete and exact predictions, including, for example, the phase and the amplitude, which is necessary to break degeneracies. And because we follow the time evolution of these correlators, I am now showing the same figure, but as a function of time, displaying how the cosmological collider signals are built differently as inflation proceeds. And this illustrates how the cosmological flow approach can assist our theoretical understanding of inflationary physics, because we have now the opportunity to probe the bulk time evolution of inflationary correlators and identify, for example, characteristic time scales. Let us now consider that the quadratic mixing oscillates at the frequency set by omega c and decays with a specific power, uh, power law of the power of the scale factor given by an, a number n, and similarly compute the bispectrum in the isosceles configuration depicted in these two figures. So on the left figure, the massive field is light, and on the right, it is heavy, with both colors denoting different frequencies for the oscillating linear mixing. Importantly, a long wavelength curvature mode corresponds to a rescaling of the background experienced by short wavelength fluctuations. As a result, cosmological correlators satisfy a set of consistency relations in their soft limits, famously determined by the power spectrum tilt. 
Since by definition, adiabatic modes are locally equivalent to a change of coordinates, this consistency relation should be subtracted from any bispectrum computation as these effects are unphysical. So in dashed lines, we show the computed shape using the cosmological flow, and in solid lines, uh, the observable shapes after meticulously subtracting the unobservable consistency relation. So for heavy fields, we find a new template that consists in two modulated frequencies, a mu plus or minus mu c, and for light fields, in addition to the conventional power law behavior as a function of the momentum ratio, we, find, uh, we found that the growing envelope is modulated by oscillations with a frequency set by mu c. This noticeable feature is expected to generate distinctive oscillations in the scale-dependent galaxy bias. Moreover, we have shown here that the cosmological collider signals provide a new way to probe the inflationary landscape, as we can probe properties of the couplings and not only the properties of the fields. To sum up, the cosmological flow allows us to explore the full range of possible signatures without working under the lamppost of analytical tractability. So primordial non-gushanities are the primary target for future missions with the aim to un unravel mysteries uh, about the early universe. And with this in mind, the cosmological flow is an efficient and systematic approach to make predictions. I have shown you concrete examples with cosmological collider signals as a probe of the physics at the highest reachable energies. In particular, I have uh, exemplified how our approach can generate new theoretical data and assist our theoretical understanding of inflationary physics. Finally, with the cosmological flow as a new available tool, we can now concentrate on exploring and understanding new signatures of inflationary physics in full generality. Thank you.